Hello everyone. Here's a warm welcome to all the boys, girls and their parents. Are you interested in discussing compressors? Today I'd like to explore the topic of efficiently using a compressor. This subject is extensively covered in my intensive sessions. There's a considerable amount of content dedicated to it. To illustrate the techniques, I'll use the FabFilter Pro C2 compressor as an example. In reality, the principles remain the same for all compressors and it's important not to believe that a certain magical compressor will accomplish something extraordinary. Truly, some instruments possess their own distinctive features and we appreciate them for that. However, I personally find that Pro C2 serves as the most illustrative and understandable compressor, making it perfect for discussing what compression is, how it works, and how to utilize it effectively. I can still recall my initial confusion when I first encountered a compressor. All my experienced colleagues would advise me, Elia, you need a compressor. But I couldn't comprehend its purpose. I purchased a white dot milk box pedal for my guitar and was completely clueless about its function and what was happening. Most importantly, I struggled to perceive the effects of the damn compressor. Nonetheless, with the passage of time, I began to grasp its intricacies and now I believe I can also enlighten my subscribers on the subject. I must mention that in the video description there are links to various resources of mine. So feel free to subscribe to the channel without hesitation as something fascinating is bound to occur. Without further ado, let's proceed. I have resized my substantial face in the lower right corner of the frame in hopes that it will be less bothersome to you now. You see, the thing is, it's actually a small square face. I could easily take it out and speak directly from the frame, but for now, let's keep it as a little square face. So, right in front of us, we have the FabFilter Pro C2 compressor window. First, let's discuss the fundamental concept of what a compressor is. I won't turn on any music just yet. Instead, I'll keep it off, or in other words, I'll explain how it functions without you hearing the delightful pulsating arrows and indicators and without you witnessing all the mesmerizing beauty that comes with it. Now, what actually is a compressor? Interestingly enough, the term compressor was initially referred to as ARU, which stands for Automatic Level Regulator, in certain sources from the Soviet era. Despite the name being quite cryptic, a compressor is essentially a device used to automatically adjust the level of a signal. In my opinion, the Pro C offers one of the most comprehensive descriptions among the available compressors today. By the way, if you happen to know of any better alternatives, please recommend them in the comments. I would greatly appreciate hearing from you. I mostly use the Pro C as a sidechain compressor, but occasionally I also use it purely as a compressor. So, how does this compressor actually function? If we analyze the display, we can observe a graphical representation that indicates the performance of the compressor. Every compressor possesses a parameter known as the threshold. The threshold serves as the activation point at which the compressor initiates the compression process, reducing the volume of the signal. The extent to which the compressor reduces the volume is referred to as the ratio or reduction factor. Essentially, it is the compression ratio, regardless of the terminology used. It is important to note that not all compressors feature a threshold. An example of this is the LA2 compressor. However, there are compressors available with a fixed threshold adjustment, allowing for control over the amount of compression by manipulating the input signal level. In any compressor, the signal once it enters the compressor is divided into a signal circuit and a detector circuit. What is this? The detector circuit is the compressor circuit that we can't hear, but which, roughly speaking, the compressor analyzes and decides how to compress. The signal circuit is what happens to the signal and what you and I hear. You'll need to know that a little later. So, how much the compressor compresses is called ratio. Almost. Almost every compressor has an attack parameter. Many people, especially at first, misunderstand it, thinking that attack is how much the compressor emphasizes attack. 
in a way it does. What is the guideline for setting this parameter? Roughly speaking, the more attack. When the compressor goes slower, the impulse from our signal is missed more frequently. There is a clever metaphor that compares the compressor's operation to the way your mom behaves when you listen to music loudly. The threshold represents the volume at which your mom enters the room. Ratio represents how much quieter your mom makes the music. Attack denotes how quickly your mom reduces the volume, while release refers to how quickly you return it to loud. This metaphor is so simple that I can't recall who came up with it, but it made me smile a little. Consequently, the reformulated text is shorter while maintaining the meaning. The shorter the attack, the less part of the impulse, the less part of the signal the compressor misses. This is important to remember, especially when you are working with low frequency sources. If you make, for example, the attack on a drum very short, the low frequency component will probably be compressed quite a bit too and will not be missed by the compressor. The higher the attack is, the more we miss the primary pulse. Release is the time it takes for the compressor to open back up to the original state. There is a theory that it is important to match attack and release to tempo. Yes, this sometimes works, but it's not a panacea, and it's absolutely not a good idea to think that if you don't match attack and release to tempo, you failed. Accordingly, you and I can see, when the signal reaches the trigger point, how much it is compressed. Right now, by the way, it's compressed quite gently. I wonder what that has to do with... If you could give me a hint. That is the correct way to do it. If the attack is made as short as possible, the pulse is compressed nearly immediately. Conversely, the longer the release time, the slower the compressor takes to return to the original value. Pro-C2 includes a unique parameter called the hold parameter, which allows us to specify how long we want the signal to be held at the compressed level. This parameter keeps the signal at the compressed level for a duration before releasing. It is not common to have a parameter like this in compressors, but it proves to be very helpful, especially when I am extracting the bass sound from drums. By utilizing the Pro C2 compressor, you have the ability to slightly prolong the compression time of the bass and incorporate the lower frequencies of the drum. Although it may sound peculiar, this feature enhances the overall sound. Additionally, the compressor offers a range parameter that allows you to constrain the maximum compression range of these settings. Another vital parameter is the knee, which literally translates to knee. What does this mean? Compressors are commonly categorized into two types, hard knee and soft knee. A hard knee compressor instantaneously begins compressing at a preset compression ratio, whereas a soft knee compressor gradually increases the compression ratio as the signal exceeds the trigger point. It is a rather straightforward concept. This modified text consists of approximately 851 characters. At the bottom, what I just closed, there is an important section. This section is mainly about controlling the detector circuit. Here we can apply different filters, different slopes of decay, equalizing the detector chain, side chain. What's the purpose of this? For example, if you want to compress a mix, but you want the compressor to not react strongly to the drum, or to not react strongly to the top, or to react only to the middle, which is often done when compressing the whole mix bus. What can we do with a compressor? Let's, I think it's time to open up the music for a second.
By the way, a good example. Uh, to effectively minimize the vocal presence in the music, I employ a Pro C2 configuration like this, ensuring its authenticity remains unquestionable. I trigger it from the external signal of my microphone. This is done in this way. In Reaper, we grab the routing icon, drag to the plugin channel, make sure the third or fourth channel inside the channel is selected. In Reaper, there can be up to 128 channels now inside a single channel. After that, I'm going to delete this sound back in because I've already done it. After that, it's important to make sure right here in the routing settings that channels 3 through 4 are assigned to the stereo side chain. By the way, if there were like six channels, and I would want one instrument on this track, for example, uh, to sidechain the vocals and the other instrument to sidechain the snare drum, uh, then I would create two more tracks, and on the other instrument I would assign channel 5 or 6 as the sidechain source. Accordingly, when I say the following happens, why do I use low-pass and high-pass filters? Because I don't want when I'm going to be... When I'm screaming with my mouth, I don't want the drums to be compressed. Well, for example, look. That's not cool, right? It's not cool. So we're going to turn it off. And I can just keep on humming forever. Well, and the very bottom just so there's some spontaneous vibe will come in, so everything doesn't get over compressed too much either. Let's come back to sidechain compression a little bit later. It's just since, because since we're talking about it, I'm going back to the compressor on the drum bus, and let's look more visually at what I was talking about. There's an interesting concept mentioned in Mike Paul Stavrou's book, Mixing with Your Mind where he compares a compressor to a safe. He explains how the process of matching a cipher to a safe works utilizing a specific sequence. Now, I would like to share a valuable technique with you that functions as follows. By setting the compression ratio high and adjusting the threshold appropriately, the compressor is triggered more forcefully. We decrease the release level, which allows us to increase the attack. This can be done depending on our goal. If we want a shorter attack, we can eliminate transient sounds and enhance the signal, making it sound more jam-like. If the attack is longer, we let more transient information through. Well, just so you realize I'm not lying, we choose the attack depending on what we want. In this case, for example, we want to, as they say nowadays in the fancy shorts, to make punch drums. Accordingly, we want to skip the drum attack a little bit forward. At the same time, I don't want the compressor to be triggered strongly by the subnits, so I'll carefully cut the subnits. Then I'll release the ratio factor, release the threshold, and pick up the release. I always do this by ear. Roughly speaking, if the release is too long, the compressor won't have time to open before the next beat. If it's too fast, the signal will sound dirtier. And then you adjust the coefficient. Bypass. In my opinion, it is very important to always adjust the subjective volume level, especially when working with compressors, with equalizers and any other processing too. I have auto gain disabled by default in the Pro C2 though. What does it do? It automatically compensates the volume, but in my opinion it doesn't do it very correctly, so I prefer to do it manually.
roughly speaking, by comparing the volume before the compressor and after the compressor. It's similar. Admittedly, I don't really like that it works strongly from the heats. So I'd tweak the top in the detector as well. By the way, we can listen to the detector signal at any time if we press the audition button. Sounds kind of nasty, doesn't it? This way, it's very easy to find the right settings. Accordingly, we frequently desire enhanced levels of compression, even more drastic compression. The radical nature of the compression increases with higher compression ratios and shorter release periods. Everything is already compressed in these drums and it's synthwave, but still moving on. Many people often question why only drums are highlighted in a performance. Perhaps we should explore other instruments, such as the bass, to create a more diverse showcase. Can you believe someone stole the bass from us, but we're not like that? We're gonna get it back. It was stolen by sound engineer Ilya Lukashev, apparently. Let's get the bass back. Let's take the same Pro C2. Accordingly, with the compressor, we can emphasize the attacks, just like in the drums. I've been told now that it's all clear from the drums, so I'm showing everything from the drums. There's an auto-release option, by the way. It doesn't do what I want it to do in this case. It's gotten very twitchy. I think the rating needs to let go. Parallel compression is a widely used and constantly promoted technique. It is often referred to as demonic compression and can be added to the desired channel. This technique enhances the reception by creating an eager, overdriven and ultra-driven effect. How does it work? By applying this demonic compression, we can achieve the desired outcome. Consequently, the drums produce an audible effect when the compressor releases the signal at the set release time, causing the tails to be revealed. This enhances the overall pumped up vibe and makes it more emotionally expressive. Sound. The essence of parallel compression is that we can add the compressed signal to the clean signal in parallel. It's already been said a thousand times everywhere. But just in case, I'll tell you for the first time. In Reaper, you can do it with the wet dry knob right here in the upper right corner of the open plugin. This allows you to both keep a little bit of the natural dynamics, but also compress the overall range, take out the tails, take out the sustaining, the tone out of the drums or any other instruments, just to be clear. 
Let's take vocals with reverbs and compression. You can scold me for this, by the way, in the comments. Accordingly, we can juggle a little bit with the balance between the compressed and clean signal to preserve some naturalness, if it is there from the beginning, and at the same time add all those compression artifacts that we love so much and dream about. In case anyone doesn't know, a deezer is essentially, more often than not, also a variation of a compressor that simply triggers sibilant consonants. It's very easy to do this. We can use control of the side chain component to cut out the extra body, the extra bottom, leaving only the sibilant consonants that interfere with us. We can listen to them. This way the compressor will be triggered only on hissing, whistling sounds, essentially becoming a de but I'd make the attack shorter for that. In this particular case, it is undoubtedly an extreme and somewhat unpleasant exaggeration. It is not the correct approach to take with regard to this vocal. The artist has already processed it quite extensively, including the use of flanges. However, I believe you grasp the main idea behind this concept. What else is important to comprehend? There is a widespread belief, with which I concur, that compression ratios are not simply added together, but rather multiplied. For instance, when you compress a vocal with a ratio of 4 to 1, and then compress the entire mix with a ratio of 10 to 1, the overall compression ratio becomes approximately 40 to 1. It may differ slightly, but the outcome remains the same. Therefore, when applying heavy compression, it is crucial to remember that the signal can be excessively compressed. In my perspective, the more compression we apply to a particular signal, the more shallow and defined it becomes within the mix. This phenomenon can be seen as both advantageous and disadvantageous simultaneously. To put it briefly, we cannot categorize it as purely negative. Instead, it is a characteristic that allows us, for example, to creatively manipulate certain elements that we desire to position deeper within the mix. If we simply lower the volume of a dynamic element, we will only hear it during its loudest moments, while it remains inaudible during the quietest parts. On the other hand, if we compress the signal and combine it with distant spatial equalization, it will still hold a consistently noticeable position in the mix. Essentially, I suggest occasionally regarding the compressor as a tool that stabilizes the placement of an instrument in the mix. The compressor acts as a barrier, similar to a band of stretched rubber, preventing the source from getting any closer than our desired proximity allows. There. Okay, moving on. What I didn't say. Compressors are often used on the master bus, the sum of all the elements. They talk about like glue, that it's glue compression. It allows you to glue everything together. Yes, it allows you to glue everything together. Just keep in mind that the compressor is going to be triggered by the loudest elements. And more often than not, your drum and snare and vocals will sag the rest of the music depending on how you set up the compressor. So I would recommend not going crazy on bus compression, well, master compression, but rather using more compression on subgroups and individual instruments. But here, it's already a personal matter for everyone. Of course, compression on the master helps sometimes too. I don't consider Pro C to be the ideal compressor for that. Nevertheless, for sure, it can cope with this kind of task. Right now, the compressor is running in internal sidechain mode, which means 
The importance lies not in its isolation, but rather in the incoming signal. By the way, the Pro C2 software comes with several built-in compression styles that significantly impact the time frame characteristics and behavior of the compressor in the time domain. This aspect is also clearly identifiable in the visual representation. And here, Keep in mind that in the clean mode, it not only produces sound, but also behaves erratically and at an incredibly high speed. You can see that even on the graph right here. I don't recommend looking at this graph. It's just that you and I have a specific purpose for this video. That's why we're looking at arrows and charts here. Typically, I prefer working with compression ratios on the lower side, such as 1.5 to 1 or 1 and 7 to 1. This approach allows for a more natural level control, mimicking the function of a fader. However, this isn't always necessary. There are instances where more intense compression is needed, and fortunately, there are numerous compressors available to fulfill those needs. Some compressors even add specific colors or tonal characteristics to the signal, similar to how tone boxes behave. Today we discussed one of these compressors, the Pro C2, but honestly I don't have much more to say about it. The concept of compression itself is quite straightforward. Its main purpose is to emphasize the attacks in a musical performance. Enhance the impact of attacks, extract gaps, and intensify the effect of recorded drums, for instance, to create a more aggressive sound. Let me make that dreadful mistake once again, this time on the spot. Just as I'm filming the video, I will start searching for live drums that possess some space and demonstrate to you how it functions. Live drums and the echo they produce. Here we go. Front of kit, that's great. If we make the attack very short, the release is quite short. the bypass we can do it like this in other words the snare drum begins to sound increasingly aggressive And, of course, when recording drums, the compressor is a very useful tool. I'm not saying that everything needs to be compressed like that, but sometimes having a channel of heavily compressed drums helps a lot emotionally to help the drummer.
you feed him those rums and he starts to feel more weighty, rock and roll and cool right away. Let's put it that way. With the compressor, we gain the ability to compress specific areas within the spectrum. To be more precise, we can designate the compressor to respond to particular segments of the spectrum. As mentioned earlier, it can also serve as a de-esser for instance. Basically, everything about level control can be done with a compressor. I don't even know what else to talk about here. It would seem that the video should be made for two hours, but just what else to talk about. If suddenly you know what else there is to talk about, be sure to write in the comments and I will come back to you with the second part of this beautiful video. Thank you so much. Subscribe, like and give me a bell. Shalom to all.